Oh, I'll put my stuff on. Look, wait a second, make put my hat on. I was told by my spiritual advisor I should wear hats. That was a long time ago. I wear hats. Oh, oh, here we go. Ooh, it's hot. It's hot now. It's getting towards summertime. Well, climate change or something like that. It's starting to get hot. Then again, I had to walk all the way down from uh, Salamanzi Village, which is where I'm crashing right now. Should I get a new place? I'm, I'm talking about myself. I'm talking about moving. Anyway, uh, Yesterday, when I was on campus, I was running around all day. I was on campus. I was walking campus with uh, with Reggie from the Fine Arts Department, the uh, head of the Fine Arts Department. I call him Reggie because that's what I call him. He calls me Brother Sloan, Brother Reggie. You know. Anyway, um, and so we were we were in deep discussion about you know the strike and all the ramifications and and stuff like that. Well, class is fucking up so hot. So. We were sitting there, uh, we came to close to my office, to outside of the uh, uh, faculty law uh, uh, building, which is where the communications department is located in the bottom there. And uh, one, of these, one of the students that I know, one of the student leader, uh, came through and uh, he says, Oh, Dr. Sloan, I need, I need a paper, I need you to open up the lab because we have a computer lab down here, which, well, we have a computer lab down there where this office is right outside. He's got like 120 computers, whatever it is. And I said, well, why don't you go to Great Hall? And I said, it's closed. I said, well, the library is closed. And I said, well, no. <laughs> he said, why? I said, because for two years I've been asking you all to sit down, let's talk intelligently about the strike action, what should be taken. You don't like the administration. Faculty on the staff doesn't like the administration. Students don't like the administration. We need to have a strategy. But no, you all refuse to talk to me. You refuse to talk to me. And then you go and pull all this boneheaded stuff. He said, oh, it's not me, no, I was there years ago. Right now, you know, this is not the SRC leadership. Well, that's the problem, you're following your leadership. Well, who is this leadership talking to? You know? So I said, no, you cause the school to be shut down. You cause the library and your computers to be shut down. You cause the great hall with all those computers to be shut down. So why should I open up the facility to you when you're the ones that caused the thing to be shut down? Because you had no strategy and you wouldn't talk to somebody who's been through this in the 60s, been through this all over the world, and you don't want to talk to me? Fine. I don't need to talk to you right now. No, brother. No, no. I said, look. So Reggie was sitting right there. He's head of the department. I said, well, I'll tell you, Reggie, what would, what would you do? Would you, would you let him in? And Reggie pondered. He says, well, I'm ahead of the department. I, I'm with the department. He said, well, you're not the head of this department. He says, yeah, but I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't let you in. I said, well, that settles it. We got things to talk about. So me and Reggie walked on. As he's walking on, this little brother yells back, I'll get you Sloan. Like, like, see? <laughs> This is what the problem is <laughs> with leaders and with, I should say, spoiled students. If they don't get what they want, they start, you know, acting out. Which, uh, which, which you need, oh, in fact, forget all that stuff. Let me go to something else completely wrong, you know, related to, in my brain. Uh, because, you know, there's this whole thing about um, uh, the U.S. elections, you know, Trump, Hillary, whatever, whatever. And what I've been noticing is like basically you know, there's two other third party candidates, but the media has been focusing on the libertarian candidate, saying how bad he is. So they, they're trying to do two fear things, the Trump fear and libertarian fear at one time. They say nothing about Jill Stein and, and her running mate, uh, his name is uh, Baraka or something like that. But anyway, her running mate, they say nothing about that. It's a complete blackout. They concentrate on the, on the two major ones and libertarian, which is basically a fourth party because the the, the, um, the Green Party, which is the Jill Stein and this Baraka guy uh, party, uh, they ignore them completely. Don't say negative or positive. Leave them alone. They're not in the mix. Now I was thinking, as I said, this is election season. People, say, it's an election season. It started last year, whatever when it started. And it starts with whatever the announcement, then all the jockeying and media getting all the then, then, then it starts with the with with the uh, primaries. So each primary, you have a chance to vote. You don't vote what you think is going to happen, you know, a year and a half from now, or, or you know, the end of the year. You vote according to what you, what you, what your interests are. You vote. That's what you do. So that's your first chance to vote. Then what happens when it gets close and they, they, they knock people down? Then as you finish your primaries, now you're in the voting season. But because we have these debates that are now controlled by the, the, the big boys, you know, the riggers, you know, now you have these debates. You have actually had another chance to vote because they're always polling. So if, even if you were going to vote for, you know, Hillary or Trump, or one of the big guys, you can, in a poll, say, oh, um, I'm voting Green. And in that, in that sense, then what happens in that voting Green party, then, then, then what happens, they get on a poll so they get the chance to part of, part of the, in the debates. And that debate will then change the whole, the whole dynamic. And so that's the second chance to vote. And then the third one is the actual election. So think about that.
Think about that from me, T, from the past, and taking the trades to bed, letting you know what I only suspect.